Hey guys, Paul with Weapons of the World here. And before you guys go crazy in the comment section, I know I'm not 2-9 Marine. Uh, as you guys probably know, 2-9 Marine is currently in the process of moving to a new house. So he asked me to step in and make some content for y'all while he was moving. So today I'm going to be talking about the Soviet PPSH-41, a very famous submachine gun during World War II and even afterwards in Korea and Vietnam, where it was used by communist forces. Uh, the caliber it shoots is 7.62 by 25 millimeter, the same ammunition that the Soviet Tokarev shoots. Overall length is about 33 inches. Uh, there's no collapsible stock like the MP40, it's just wood and iron. Overall weight's about 8 pounds. Uh, this really helped with the recoil, uh, controlling, you know, the firing an extended burst on fully automatic. Uh, the 8 pound weight really helps control recoil, keeps the muzzle down along with this muzzle brake at the end right here. This really helped when uh when firing to kind of vent the gas and allow with at least short controlled bursts the muzzle not to climb nearly as much. The barrel length is about ten and a half inches, fires from a thirty five and seventy round seventy one round excuse me drum magazine. It's a blowback operated gun, so very simple to manufacture. Fires are right about 900 rounds per minute. Uh, the effective range is about 120 meters, about 400 feet, give or take, uh, which is pretty pretty common for a gun like this. Uh, it was used for close quarters combat only, like in Moscow and Berlin. But anyways, let's get on to the actual design. Uh, it was designed by Greg Gory Spigen, if I'm pronouncing that right. My Russian is a little rush, uh, rusty, excuse me. So let me throw this on x-ray. Actually, you know what? Let me throw this on the cutaway. That's a little easier to see the actual design. So we can see like the sear and the bolt. Let me put, slow down the time. And so when you fire, you pull the trigger. This allows the bolt to go forward chambering around and firing it at the same time. Let me get that. Oops. So pull the trigger, bolt goes forward, chambers around and fires it all in almost one motion and it also ejects the round. The uh, ejector is like the AK-47 uh, actually built into the receiver itself, so it was almost impossible to break, much like the re rest of this gun. Uh, the PPSH-41 was extremely reliable, and it was overall a very rugged design. And it was really loved by its troops, especially when it came to, you know, uh, the Soviet front, where there was, you know, extreme colds, this gun would work, you know, extreme mud when the summer came around and there was the uh, you know summer I guess rains you could call it there was mud all over the place and this gun would still work much like the AK-47 uh, which would come at a later time it had a open design uh, where if any dirt mud or debris actually got in to the firearm it would just work itself out uh, or it just move into a part of the gun where there was nothing for it to get in the way of. So it was extremely reliable. Uh, even German troops, uh, you know, would pick up these PPSH-41s when they found them on the battlefield and use them against the Soviets, which is actually kind of funny seeing as how the Germans thought they were all high and mighty. They would pick up Soviet guns, which they thought the Soviets were, you know, below human untermesh, uh, you know, kind of people, a sub-race that they were trying to wipe out so it's kind of funny to think of that. Uh, let's see, anything else about this gun? Oh, they produced over 6 million PPSH-41s. Uh, it was originally designed to replace the PPD-40, which was an expensive and overcomplicated gun. Uh, it required a lot of machining, and this brought up production time and production cost. So the PPSH-41 used uh, metal... Uh, sheet stampings, so very easy to produce, and also very cheap to produce. However, it was not a uh, cheap 
gun in any way as to the quality. Quality was fine, very reliable. It was, you know, it was a Soviet gun. It was made for conscript troops who really didn't have that much in the way of brains, so to speak. So it was very simple to use, very reliable. You couldn't break the dadgum thing. And I've actually seen pictures of uh, Soviet troops laying the buttstock on the ground and sitting on the drum magazine itself as a kind of stool. And it'd still work fine, even though, you know, sometimes these drum magazines would get damaged and, you know, would break. But overall, the quality was kind of on par with Soviet firearms at the time. It was rugged, reliable, kind of ugly, but it worked. And that was the important thing. It worked. Mud, snow, ice, didn't matter. The PPSH-41 would fire every time, assuming you have ammo for it. Uh, anything else about it? It was used well after World War II into Korea and Vietnam, and even has popped up today in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, used by Mujahideen forces and the Taliban, and even some Iraqi police forces. Uh, I've seen uh, several pictures and videos of them just kind of spraying down the street, firing at whatever they thought they were firing at. But it kind of just shows you, even after all this time, it's pretty pretty much still a viable weapon on the battlefield. But anyways, guys, uh, again, this is Paul with Weapons of the World. A uh, link to my channel will be in the description below. Thanks, Thank you very much to 2-9 Marine uh, for allowing me to kind of get some exposure on uh, on his channel. I'm pretty new to the YouTube community even though I do have a Facebook page that has become relatively popular not to toot my own horn or anything. But anyways guys I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.